Hello! I'm off camera. Now I'm here. Welcome back to the Epic of Gilgamesh Tablet 2. Uh, so Ankhadu's eating bread. I made some bread <laughs> earlier today. Uh, would you say it is as mighty as a rock from the sky? It's very hard. Uh, but yes, this is the kind of bread that Ankhadu would have been eating. Hard, full, bready bread. Eat bread, Ankhadu, essential to life. Drink ale, the lot of the land. Bread and ale, very good stuff. Okay, now that was a really silly diversion. Eat the bread, Ankudu, essential to life. Drink the ale, the lot of the land. Ankudu ate bread until he was sated. He drank the ale, a full seven goblets. His mood became free. He started to sing. His heart grew merry. His face lit up. The barber groomed his body so hairy, anointed with oil, he turned into a man. Now that is an interesting line. Anointed with oil, he turned into a man. Because do you know what Messiah means in Hebrew? Messiah means anointed one. Do you know what Christ means in Greek? It means anointed one. <laughs> so we have a, a very ancient tradition of anointing. And what anointing means, literally, is covering with oil, but what it means symbolically is a raising in the level of consciousness. So Ankhadu was a beast, he becomes the anointed one, and he becomes a man, right? And then Christ was a man, and then he becomes anointed, and he becomes a god, right? So there's this elevation of consciousness associated with anointment that has been with us for a long, long time. All right, so. The barber groomed his body so hairy, anointed with oil, he turned into a man. He put on a garment, became like a warrior. He took up his weapon to do battle with lions. When at night the shepherds lay sleeping, he struck down the wolves, he chased off the lions. Sleeping lay the senior shepherds, their shepherd boy, Ankadu. A man wide awake. A certain fellow had been invited to a wedding to Uruk the sheepfold. He was going to a banquet. Ankadu was having his pleasure with Shamhat. There have been a number of lacunas, so the, it's very choppy. We're, we're jumping around. Um, you know, it's just like, think of it like a dream. Like there's one thing, oh, he's a shepherd and he's fighting lions and then all of a sudden he's sleeping with Shamhat and we're, we're just, you know, it's this is the life of Ankadu in, in broken broken form. Ankadu was having his pleasure with Shamhat. He lifted his eyes, caught sight of the man, and thus he spoke to the harlot. Shamhat, bring the man over. Why he came here, let me learn his reason. The harlot hailed to the man, went to him, and spoke to him. He's just interrupting them having sex, and he's like, what is that guy doing here? <laughs> Where do you hurry to, fellow? What is your journey so tell why what is your journey so toilsome? The fellow opened his mouth, saying to Ankadu, I was invited to a wedding banquet. It is the lot of the people to contract a marriage. I shall load the ceremonial table with tempting foods for wedding feasts. For the wedding feast. For the king of Uruk in the town square, the veil will be parted for him, for the one who picks first. For Gilgamesh, Uruk, the... the mm, let me read that again. For the king of Uruk of the town... For the king of Uruk, the town... <laughs> For the king of Uruk, the town square, the bear will be... I cannot read. <laughs> for the king of Uruk, the town square, the veil will be parted for the one who picks first. For Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk, the town square, the veil will be parted for the one who picks first. So this is a euphemism for the bursting of, of the hymen, or the tearing of the hymen, rather. Um, the veil will be parted for the one who picks first. He will couple with the wife-to-be. He, first of all, the bridegroom after. By divine consent it is so ordained. When his navel cord was cut for him, she was destined. <sighs> what is divine consent? By divine consent it was so ordained that the king could rape his citizens. Except the gods also made Ankadu to protect the citizens from Gilgamesh's raping. So are the gods condoning man's sins? Or are they saying, no, that's bad? It seems like they're saying both. <laughs> it's a, a funny conception of Godhead. Uh, one that we see often, this sort of like deeply contradictory uh, 
deeply contradictory god, which actually doesn't give us any <laughs> proper moral compass whatsoever, <laughs> despite people's claims. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, uh, yes, he will couple with the wife to be, he first of all, the bridegroom after, by divine consent it is so ordained, when the king's navel cord was cut, for him she was destined, <laughs> destiny by the gods, to be a rapist and then to stop. At the world, at, at the fellow's world, at the fellow's words, his face paled in anger. Ankudu's face paled in anger because he's like, "Oh my God, that guy's raping everybody. That's not okay." Off goes Ankudu with Shamhat following. He entered the city of Uruk, the town square, and a crowd gathered around. He came to a halt in the street of Uruk, the town square. All gathered about. The people discussed him. They're discussing this wild man from the forest who's come. In build, he is the image of Gilgamesh, but shorter in stature and bigger of bone. For sure, it's the one who was born in the uplands. Animals' milk is what he was suckled on, as opposed to humans who were not suckled on the milk of animals. Yes, <laughs> human animals. In Uruk, they held regular festivals of sacrifice. Young men made merry, set up a champion for the fellow whose features were fair, for Gilgamesh, like a god, was set up a rival. Gilgamesh needed a rival. Ankudu's the rival. For the goddess of weddings, the bed was laid out. Gilgamesh met with the maiden by night. Forward came Ankudu. He stood in the street, blocking the path of Gilgamesh. No, you will not rape that woman. The land of Uruk was standing around him. The land gathered about him. The crowd was milling about him before him. The menfolk were thronging about him. Like a babe in arms, they were kissing his feet. Already the fellow for the goddess of weddings was ready. The bed for Gilgamesh, like a god, was set up a substitute. Ankudu's the substitute. Ankudu, with his foot blocked the door of the wedding house, not allowing Gilgamesh to enter. They seized each other at the door of the wedding house. In the street they joined combat in the square of the land. The door dram shook. The wall did shudder. In the street Gilgamesh and Ankudu joined combat. The square of the land. The door jam shook. The wall did shudder. Another lacuna intervenes, partially filled by a different tablet. Gilgamesh knelt, one foot off the ground. His anger subsided. He broke off from the fight. After he broke off from the fight, Ankudu said to him, To Gilgamesh, As one unique, your mother bore you, the wild cow of the fold, the goddess Ninsun. High over warriors, you are exalted to be the king of the people, and Lil made it your destiny. At this point, the one tablet ends, its sequel is less preserved. Here we go. Why do you desire to do this thing? Anything do you want so much? Let me! A feat that has never been done in the land. Oh, so there's been a lacuna where Gilgamesh says, I want to go into the pine forest. He'll figure it out. They kissed each other and formed a friendship. After another lacuna, Tablet 2 resumes with an episode in which Gilgamesh introduces Ankudu to his mother, the goddess Ninsun. She's a cow. She's a divine cow. Two-thirds goddess, one-third man. That's Gilgamesh. They kissed each other and formed a friendship. The mightiest in the land, strength he possesses. His strength is as mighty as a rock from the sky. I wonder who that is. <laughs> he is tall in stature, proud as a battlement. The mother of Gilgamesh opened her mouth to speak, saying to her son, Wild Cow Ninsun opened her mouth to speak, saying to Gilgamesh, My son, his gate, in his gate, bitterly you, you hold it, his gate, bitterly he. There's lots of lacunas, we don't know what she's saying. Ankudu possesses no kith or kin, shaggy hair, hanging loose, he was born in the wild and has no brother. Standing there, Ankudu heard what she said, and thinking it over, he sat down weeping, his eyes brimmed with tears, his arms fell limp, his strength ebbed away. They took hold of each other and they linked their hands like Gilgamesh. To Ankudu he spoke a word, saying... Why, my friend, did your eyes brim with tears? Your arms fell limp, your strength ebb away. Said Ankudu to him, to Gilgamesh, My friend, my heart is aggrieved. Through sobbing my legs do tremble. Terror has entered into my heart. Alright, why is terror entered into the heart of Ankudu? We're going to find out in the next episode. It's over there on the playlist. Somewhere. See you soon.